What's up, everybody? This is Phil Rogacki. And I'm Jared Abergina. You're listening to Two Tree Guys Podcast. What's up, everybody? Phil Rogacki here, bringing you another story from Two Tree Guys sitting here at Arbor Fest. Welcome, my friend, Mark. Thank you for having me. Yeah, this definitely. Is awesome. Definitely. Is this your first podcast? This is my first podcast. It's not the first time on your Instagram. So <laughs> I've joined a lot of those and we've had some good stories yeah, from that. Good. Uh, and a lot of late nights because it's uh, usually about midnight, uh -huh. one o'clock by the time we wrap up those. Uh, yeah. And I got to go to work at uh, 630 oh, in the morning. Good, so good. it's, it's uh, so when you're tired the next day. It's our fault. Yeah, pretty I like much. That. I blame I it like on that. Jared. Oh, please, please. Bl I blame everything on Jared. For Why not? Well, man, uh, you know, I'm glad you're on the show. Uh, I haven't really heard your story, but uh, and there's a lot of people out there that haven't heard your story, but I want to share your story and who you are and, and what you're about. And uh, we'd love to have you come out to the California and the ranch and spend a couple of days with us, maybe training and, and hearing your full story. But how'd you get in this industry? Uh, my mom works for a parks department that has uh, forestry guys there. And as a young kid, you know, she was a single mom that had, uh, you know, didn't have daycare on the days where like Christmas Eve and New Year's Eve. And so I would go into work with her. And, you know, one of the forestry guys was always like, hey, why don't you just bring him out with me? So I'm like 10 years old and they're like setting up Christmas lights. Do mm -hmm. you want to go up in the bucket truck? Well, yeah, of course I do. <laughs> right. Like heights. I was never afraid of that. Um, why do you so think that is? I think partially because my mom was never like, hey, you know, don't get hurt. Um, or if you did fall, it wasn't like, oh, are you OK? It's like, you're fine. Just get back up. She let you be a kid. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, you know, from there I was I was in Boy Scouts. So I knew my knots. And, you know, I'd, I'd done tree climbing at a very I would I would say more safe than than a lot of people are climbing who actually do production of boar culture yeah. um, because I would use a rope. I'd throw it over a union. I would clip it into my leather belt mm -hmm. with a carabiner and I would literally hold the other end and I would limb walk. Okay. Yeah. How old were you here? Uh, 10, 11, 10, 11, you know, gotcha. cause I, cause I'd kind of seen the guys do it at work. I didn't know about a Blake's hitch. I mm -hmm. didn't know about a tot line and I didn't know any of the friction. So you're just figuring it out yourself. I was literally just holding the other end of the rope. <laughs> right. And it's like behind my grandma's barn uh, in Prince Edward Island. You know, she doesn't see it. She doesn't want to see it because she's like, you know, trying to pull even me as a kid pulling out loose tooth. Yeah. Did not want to see it. Hmm. Right. So she wasn't uh, the dangerous type. But uh, yeah, from there, it was kind of like, you know, I, I didn't know what I wanted to do in high school. Mm -hmm. um, I was I wanted to be kind of a teacher because I enjoyed teaching and I had spent time coaching wrestling. Um, and so I did co-op as an elementary school gym teacher. Coaching and, wrestling. So you wrestled in high school? Yeah, I wrestled in high school. Um, I played lacrosse, you know, from 10 years old right up till 21. That's why I like you, man. You wrestled. Wrestling yeah. was my sport. I loved wrestling. Yeah, and, and wrestling, you know, it's it's not what you get out of it in terms of the wrestling portion and the techniques. It's what you learn outside of that. Yes. And that's that's what life as a kid is, really, I think. It's not about teaching them to play sports. It's what sports will do for them later in life. Um, Bingo. You know, the, the balance of the, the, the practice and having to do school and having to have family time and, you know, making choices. Yeah. Do I want to be in every sport or do I want to be good at one sport? Mm -hmm. Do I want to be a really good tree climber? Because that's what I chose to do. Yeah. Gotcha. Got and, and, you know, you're absolutely right about that. It's these sports. It's not I'm just a good wrestler. It's it taught me you know, dedication to be committed, it, grit, not to quit because it's just me. And that's it out there on the mat. It's just me and wrestlers. They run more, work out more. It's the hardest sport there is out there. Well, you know, once you've wrestled, everything else is easy. Oh gosh. Yes. Right. Yeah, everything's easy. Like when I I'd, I'd rather wrestle cup, and lose. Weight. I'd rather wrestle and lose than play basketball and dribble in my shorts. Yes. Screw basketball that's the same time of year we hated the basketball players every time they had the easiest practices more fans oh yeah, yeah. until people saw wrestling and then they're like i can yeah. get behind this like, i like the uniforms they do. <laughs> you probably got one on underneath that, oh yeah there. i gotcha. do gotcha 
So, so t- let's, t- let's talk about, you know, your first job and kind of getting into the tree care industry. How'd you, how'd you get in, started climbing, working with your mom or going to work with your mom, watching, uh, the individuals, but now. Yeah. First- so, uh, I'm wrapping up high school and I'm like, I don't want to be a teacher. I, I don't want to lose, you know, $60,000 on an education and not want to do it. So I'm going to go to this program um, and it's going to teach me at a technical college how to be an arborist and how to climb. Mm-hmm. So I signed up for Humber College uh, in Toronto and I go there and I have, you know, what I would consider no real knowledge of stuff. Like I'm good with knots. I don't know these specific knots, but I know knots. And so I went there and I really enjoyed it primarily because of the fact that the teachers that were there were actual arborists. They were not professors who had been 40 years, never done the job. They could tell me what it was going to be like the next day on the job. What was what was this? uh, What was the curriculum you're taking or what would you sign up for? Yeah, so it's it's urban arboriculture, which I now I'm an actual teacher of. Um, and so it's a two semester course that was typically run from January till March. And because that was when the best teachers could be available because they weren't busy. It's winter for us. So we're not busy. Mm-hmm. So you get the best instructors that can offer the best program to the students. Mm-hmm. And what happened there was, you know, you got all of the information that those teachers had combined over their numerous years mm-hmm. of experience. And so we went through different classes such as chainsaw climbing, uh, tree ID, safety, um, science are like just the theory behind a lot Mm -hmm. of it. And so there's that first level and then you're kind of expected to go out and get a job. Gotcha. So you go through those two semesters. No, you you go through one semester first. Okay. And you get, you're going to, they don't make you get a co-op, but it's like, go find a job. And then there's also two portions of that. You could either sign up for yourself or you can sign up through a company as an apprentice. Okay. So the government will actually give you monetary help in terms of going to school. They will pay for half of your tuition. Hmm. Your employer can choose whether they're going to pay for the other half or they're going to ask you to. Um, but this way, hmm. when employers are slow, they have an option in the winter to be able to send some of their newer workers to school. Okay. So, yeah, you kind of go work. So during school, I'm, I'm like, I need a job. Right. I'm not just going to be somebody who's like, well, I didn't find a job. So I start I sent out like 40 resumes Mm -hmm. to everybody around me. One person got back to me. When you say you said you just emailed them, I emailed them. You emailed them. So just find a company, emailed, emailed, emailed one. One responded, said, yeah, come on in for an interview. Why why do you think that is? Because it was February. I mean, nobody's looking for workers in February back in 2011. Uh. Okay. At that time of the year for us, most companies shut down, like small companies. Nobody's answering emails. Or small any- companies shut down. Gotcha. Okay. Medium size, they might keep half their staff on at that time. Um, so one company returns to my call and, and we had a good interview. You know, they were the right direction. So I was out of traffic on the way into work. And I was again, I was going the other way from traffic on the way home. It was great. <laughs> okay. So we set up, Hey, this is a great little story. April 1st, uh, that's they said when school then I said I don't know it's done by April 1st so I'll start April 1st not even thinking like it's April Fool's right <laughs> so April 1st falls on a Friday that year and I go to work they said we start at 7 I'm there at 6 45 nobody's there not a single car in the parking lot I'm like oh maybe it's like a late starting company nothing I wait 7 nothing 7 15 nothing 7 30 nothing I call the boss I said hey uh, it's Mark you know I'm supposed to be starting my first day here there's nobody here he's like no, this is a joke. I'm like, no, I'm standing outside. Like there's this truck here. I think it's one of the company trucks. All right, I'll send somebody over. So he sends over the 76 year old mechanic. This guy's license plate is lumpy. L U M P Y lumpy. He's like, yep, there's a guy here. He, he's ready to work. They're like, <laughs> okay, well just go have him pick up that firewood. So they, they put me in a truck. <laughs> I, okay, I've never driven a 550 before. Oh, gosh. Okay? They send me in this truck. I don't know. He's like, follow me. I follow him. I don't know where but I this am. This is the guy that you had the great interview with? It was the only interview. I'm on, it wasn't a great interview. It was just oh, the only okay. interview. Only interview. <laughs> and uh, he thought it was great because he hired me, I guess. But anyways, uh, he drives me out. He's like, okay, once you get all this firewood picked up, you can go home. So I literally was left with a truck and a 
pile of firewood on the ground that was all split and they wanted it stacked into the truck. So I did it and I was done at like half a day. So I called him and he's like, yeah, you can go home. Uh-huh. And that was my first day. What he also didn't tell me was that Fridays, it was a Friday, um, they have Fridays off. So that's their rain day. Uh, so they work 10 hour shifts Monday through Thursday. And if they have a rain day, then they can work Friday. Gotcha. So he, the year before the guys had pulled an April fool's joke on him. And so he thought that was what this was. <laughs> so anyways, that was the starting of it. Oh, um, nice. you know, and I, I worked there for a little while, but on my first day, I realized that the company's uh, philosophy on training and education was not where my philosophy was. And where was your philosophy? I wanted more. Um, I did not believe that on the job training was enough because I had seen the level of the students who came into the program with only on the job training Mm -hmm. and where they were at. And then as I looked around the company, I could see people who had been there for three to five years. And in three months, I was already ahead of them. Isn't that incredible when you aren't on the job trying to learn? But in a classroom setting, in a hands-on setting where you don't have to stress or worry about the customer or your coworkers or the boss or timeliness and getting the job done, and you can just focus on investing yourself, what you can do in three months is what somebody can do in three years. Elevated training, right? You're not getting this whole broken chain of telephone information. These guys that I was working beside, they were getting their information from somebody else who worked there. And they got their information from the previous owner. So he was an old, experienced arborist, but he was doing it, you know, the way from 30 years ago. They didn't use throw lines. And they didn't use throw lines because they said they got tangled too much. Do you know what they stored the throw lines in? What? A plastic bag. (laughs) Okay? Me, as a college student, I could not go out and afford a throw cube. So I went to the dollar store and got a pop-up laundry hamper. Hmm. And I put it in that. For a dollar, it lasted me six months. That's a good investment. That's a great investment. Good That's ROI. Good. Yes. Right. So for me, I knew I after the first day, I knew I was not going to stay there. That second day, the, the the first day I worked alongside other people, and they criticized me for going to school for urban arboriculture because that company had typically hired from a forestry program, so no climbing, or if there was, it was like one week of climbing. So they mm. were very much, we want to train you how to climb. And you need to know about forestry, even though we're working in a city and we don't do anything forestry related. Why, why do you think that is? Again, it just comes from the top, right? Yeah. The old management. And it, it, it just keeps going. It keeps yeah. going. And, it they, keeps and, going. and I think it was something of they thought that like those people were tougher. You know, they would last longer. Um, I also didn't like the line of work that they were really in. They were more on the electrical side, um, line clearing. Is kind the company of, still around? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, and, and they have changed. And, and I will say for a fact that I was very impressed when they had changed. Um, they started sending people to school, um, encouraging them to finish their schooling because they had a couple guys who had gone to school when I was there. They had only finished the first one and they'd never gone back. Hmm. Right. And even as guys who'd been in the industry for 10 years, I look now and I'm like, man, that was like they should have been so much better. Um, and they were great. I, I learned a lot about cranes there. Uh, six months in or three months out of school, I was on crane jobs, like gotcha. doing the cutting um, because I was the only climber available on the job site to do it. Right. <laughs> but the awesome thing was, was that I wasn't just using a crane operator. It was the head guy who was the head climber yeah. was operating the crane. Gotcha. So when I got stuck, he could help me out. He was coaching. He me. was telling me what to do. We didn't have a scale. So we had to judge how tight everything was and how much something weighed by the tightness of the slings. Gotcha. Right. And I still use that to this this day because I believe that you need to be able to use something more than just a Senna to communicate. Yeah. You need to be able to judge the weight based on more than just the scale. Mm -hmm. So there's so much more that goes into it than just relying on technology. Yeah. Right. A calculator is not the only way to do math. Mm -hmm. So for me, like I think for myself, it was also to know what else is out there. Because if you've only ever worked at one company, you can say that the grass is greener over there, but you forget that it smells like shit, <laughs> right? Yeah. And, and I know that it smells like shit over there, Yeah. right? So I, I really do enjoy where I'm at. And I tell that to my, my fellow employees. Where are you at now? I'm at Arborwood Tree Service. Okay. Um, so, you know, from, from that spot, um, you know, I kind of, I moved on. Funny enough, before I actually started working at, at the other spot, 
Um, the owner of Arborwood had been approached uh, by one of his employees who was a, a teacher for me and said, you need to go talk to this guy. This guy's going to be something. Okay. And so they come up to me at the end of school. They have a, fa a job fair, which I didn't know about because I would have waited. Is this your second semester now? This is still first semester. Still first. Okay. So before I actually started any job in a bore culture, they had a job fair. And then people are like, oh, you should go talk to Mark. You should go talk to Mark. I didn't know that. Yeah. So I'd already applied. And when I, when I put myself to something, I commit. I wasn't going to back out before I even started. Mm -hmm. uh, and it was further for me. It was a drive. It was an hour and a half drive to get to this other place. And so I remembered that because he said, well, if anything changes, let me know. So I wanted to leave. And I called him. And I said, you know, what can we do? He's like, come on down for an interview. So I had an interview. He said, whenever you're ready to start, you let me know. Mm -hmm. and, I, and, and so from there, you know, I, I met uh, Chris the Stratting who mm -hmm. has been a lifelong friend uh, and mentor for myself. And, you know, we went, we were, she was in the year ahead of me. So when mm -hmm. I was in first year of school, she was in second year. And, you know, we just, we were so much alike. Uh, we had that competitive drive. We were competitive sort of on the job site. You know, she was the first four person I ever had gotcha. um, at that company. And we worked hand in hand for a long time together. And I learned a lot of things from Krista. And it's so cool that, we were able to work together. We were able to win together. Uh, she has since left the company, but we're okay. still able to now come back and work together at cool. Notch. Oh, very cool. So Super we're cool. like, we know, she knows all of my family. I've been to her family dinners. You know, <laughs> we can relate on everything. Yeah. Um, you know, the frustrations we might have and this and that. You know, we're in the same areas. We live 40 minutes away. Yeah. You know, like it, it's, we had That's our, cool. we had a little Notch Ambassador Summit last year. She literally came to my house and we made pizza. <laughs> I like it. I so, like it. Yeah, it, it's. Um, I've been at Arborwood now for going on ten and a half years. Now, what do you do for the company? Everything. Everything. Yeah. Um, prior to last year, I wasn't doing any quoting, uh, but I've cert I've started to get into a little bit of that. How do you like that? I think it's it's interesting. Like I really enjoy it because I. I, I would say I'm a people person. You absolutely are a people um, person. And I can usually relate to most people. Uh, and I can figure out when somebody's trying to pull the wool over my eyes. Gotcha. And uh, I don't stand for that. Gotcha. Um, and I, I need to remember that I am on company time and I can't always tell them what I want to tell them. <laughs> uh, but as I mature, my uh, my particulate filter is getting a little bit smaller. Good. So I'm, I'm starting to filter some of the things I say good, sometimes. Good. Now, do you guys both do residential, commercial? We do, we do everything. So we do like, you know, come to your house and do your stuff. Uh, we work for landscapers who are doing your property. We work for the landscapers that are doing a big, uh, maybe industrial park. Okay. Uh, we do municipal work. We do some hydro work. So oh, hydro, wow. hydro for us is power lines. Mm -hmm. Uh, I don't know why it's such a thing, but like Americans are like, what's hydro water. You guys cut <laughs> trees around water. No, it's power lines. Mm -hmm. Um, but most of our power is made through water. Anyways, that's off topic. Um, <laughs> so we do, we do honestly everything. We do hedging, plant healthcare. Nice. Plant healthcare is the biggest part of our business. Um, you know, we've we've increased uh, the number of people that we have working in that department uh, by a hundred percent. By a hundred percent, I guess we've doubled basically uh, over the last year. Good. Um, so now, it's now. Why is that? How? How? How or why? Both. Um, we have always been focused on a natural plant health care. So mm -hmm. something that if you're going to give it to your trees, you should be able to take it. Gotcha. So, you know, compost tea, it may not taste good, but you can drink it. It's safe for you to drink. Mm -hmm. And that's been what the company has been running since I started there. And is the company looking to continue to keep expand? I mean, doubling a company in a year is not an easy task. No. Any... And that was mostly the plant health care side. Um, and we've had our ups and downs on our tree crews. You know, we've had it where we were up to five crews and we were down to basically two and we were struggling and looking for people and looking for people that met our quality, right? Like our motto is safety, integrity, and professionalism. We are not about the quantity. We were totally about the quality. We would like, there was times where we debated if we just cut down to one crew of the three top guys, get rid of everybody else and have no headaches. <laughs> And it was serious because it was so hard finding people and then just what people wanted. So what are you, what are you guys doing now to find people? Um, we're, we're looking, you know, we're, we're putting out more social media stuff. Uh, we're trying to show that it's not a white male dedicated or like not dedicated, um, but like marginalized area, right? Yeah. Like anybody can do this. 
You don't have to be a certain body shape, right? Not everyone in a board culture or even on a production company has to be a climber. We need really good grounds person. Mm -hmm. You don't have to be 18 years old. Like I've had people come in and I'm like, my goal for you would be to be the lead grounds person. Mm -hmm. Like you're going to be the one running my ropes. Cause that person to me is just as important as the person in the tree. Yep. Absolutely. Right. And there's times where I would rather be running my own ropes in the tree than the person on the ground running them because mm -hmm. I'm like, eh, I don't want to die. Yeah. And so I try and get people to have realistic goals. Uh, and we just hired a few people who it's like, you know, they're not realistic. Like their realistic goals are not to be a climber. They're 50 something years old. They've been it somewhat in the chainsaw business for 50 something or 30 yeah. something years. And for them, they know, like, I'm not going to be a climber. So what can we make you the best at? Mm -hmm. Is that putting you on plan healthcare? Is that having you on stumping? You know, being the lead grounds person, kind of running the ropes, making sure you're training the new grounds person mm -hmm. how to be right. Yeah. You know, we've always had a better turnover or not a better turnover. We've, been, we've had better success with finding somebody who has no experience. I because, hear that all the time. And that's my yeah. experience, too. Yeah. They by training somebody right you get to train them the right way yep you don't have to train them how bob trained joe and yep. joe trained so and so and it was the wrong way and it went through six generations yeah. of learning the wrong way you can teach them from scratch yeah it, the hardest thing that you cannot teach work ethic you cannot teach showing up on time and on time for us is early mm -hmm. if you are not 15 minutes early or five minutes early you are late mm -hmm. um and it's gotten to the point now where like the new people were trying to beat me because I was always the first one. I opened the gates and then once we got a new spot, I was always the one turning the alarm off and then they got there earlier and I'm like, okay, like I get it. <laughs> but my reason for coming in early is because I am a people person. I want to know how your night was. I want to yeah. just be able to decompress, right? Like so many mornings I drive to work and I don't have the radio on. I'm just nothing. I'm just thinking, mm -hmm. right? Um, and I want that time. I want to be able to sort of set up my day. And now it's like I get there and people are already doing stuff. And I'm like, <laughs> all right, well, I guess we're starting at 6.15 now. Uh -huh. um, you know, and we've we've had little things that we figured out around along the way. Like we used to start at 7 and we found, you know, back then that I was fine. But then the traffic got worse. More people are moving into the area. The, the, the roads haven't gotten any bigger. Yeah. So we need to start early. But then we started at six and that was way too early. Like nobody wants you at their house a quarter to seven in the morning starting no, a chainsaw. No. So then we're wasting an hour on site. So we need to find that middle ground. And then so we could start at 630. You know, everyone should be gone by seven. Gotcha. Um, and we do some things differently. Like all of our trucks are emptied every night. You know, we we kind of go through that because we don't know who's going to be necessarily on the same truck. Um, and it's, it's a little bit of a safety thing too, right? Like we're not going to be losing all our expensive yeah. gear every night. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it, it's, it's really been an awesome spot. Um, I've gotten into a little bit of quoting, mostly filling in when other people are on vacation. Yeah. Um, you know, or just to give myself a break, right. Cause I, I typically get all of the big removals, the nasty hedges. Um, so that's, that's not easy on yourself, yeah. right. Climbing yeah. up and down a 16 foot orchard ladder all day. People are like, Oh, that's easy. Well, not if you do it all the time. Who, who are you training to replace yourself? Uh, I got a guy that just. He came up through another great program that's uh, happening in Ontario. It's called the Ontario Grounds Workers Program. And they're basically bringing people in, training them on the basic level of how to be a grounds person. And he had a rock climbing background. And he came in first day. He was kind of described as a little bit of quirky. And uh, after the first day, he shows up. I'm doing a small sugar maple prune. Not really a lot for him to do. So this is my perfect opportunity to see what he knows see what he actually got out of his program. So I said, go grab the rigging rope, grab a block, grab a porter wrap, five to one kit. I said, you're going to set up a negative rigging scenario here. So I want you to tie on the porter wrap with a timber hitch, block on with a cow hitch. I want you to run the rope through, pretend there's a notch, tie it all up. Once you've done that, then tie every single knot you know onto that piece of rope. Take the five to one kit apart. I want you to reassemble the whole thing. He did it all. It was perfect. Dude. That's education there. I said, that if this guy awesome. is quirky, you send me every single quirky person and I will take Gosh, it. Gosh, that's awesome. Right. That's awesome. So and he's that was, next you. I honestly believe he Good. is going to be the next Good. me. He has a passion, right? I've got to change his passion because his passion is rock climbing. Mm -hmm.
but I'm working on it. Okay. It's <laughs> very slowly. I, I'm getting him to enjoy tree climbing more. Well, does he, he make money rock climbing? No. 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 And, he, and he's bugging me to, to, he wants to be sponsored. He wants to be this. And I'm like, well, you know, I got connections in the tree world. I don't have connections in the rock climbing yeah. world. So, you know, I've got, he's got the itch for the gear, right? Mm -hmm. And I could see that in his rock climbing. You know, he, he talks about it. He, we talk about things on the drive home, right? Those are the cues to me as to whether somebody is really, this is a job or is it a career and a passion? Mm -hmm. um, when you start messaging me on Instagram and being like, hey, is this piece of gear? You know, I don't think, is this okay to be doing? Like, those are the things that I will help you with. And that's for my students and, you know, the listeners, like, I'll help you with that stuff. Like, mm -hmm. I just finished, our school literally just finished yesterday and I wasn't there for the last two days. So I had said my goodbyes the week before. And I told them, I'm like, just because I'm no longer your teacher here does not mean I, my education for yourself will stop. Mm -hmm. My whole Instagram is about teaching. I don't put up flashy photos just so that you think they're cool and like them. I do it so that you can read and understand, ask cool. questions because I don't care how many likes it gets. That's awesome. Because That's I awesome. don't get a lot of likes. So you can't <laughs> care about that. <laughs> um, so what, what's some wisdom or tip from the top from you of that you can share with the, the viewers and the individual driving today in their truck and going to work this morning? Uh, what can you share with them? What's the one thing? Low and slow. Low and slow. So whatever you're doing, if you're going to start building a house, you need to maybe start with a chicken coop. If you plan on building your own timber frame house out in California, don't start on a huge mansion. Build your dog a house at a timber frame. It's going to be smaller material, less margin for error. And if your dog has a little bit of a draft, it's probably not going to care. From there in tree work, it's like you get this new device and you buy it at this Arbor Fest Expo. And instead of just taking it home and setting it up by yourself, why don't you come to the people who are making it? And I literally just finished doing that. Mm -hmm. I literally helped a 70 year old gentleman set up his Rope Runner Pro. That's cool. And his plan is to continue climbing until he's done. And I don't see that being anytime soon. That's cool. That's you know, cool. whatever technique you want to do, you want to start driving, you don't hop on the freeway in a Porsche. You hop in a 1993 Toyota Tercel <laughs> and you go to a parking lot because the overhead and the what happens if you do damage it, it's $30 to put a new bumper on. Mm -hmm. It's not a million dollars and you've killed somebody. That's good. Low and slow I like for that. everything. I like that. I like that. Well, Mark, I appreciate you being on the show, man. I'm, I'm looking forward to you coming down to or coming over to California and spending some time with us and hearing your full story because you there's a lot more to you than we got today and a lot more. Uh, I don't know and, if you got enough film or <laughs> should I say we memory do, card. Man. We do. For this guy. Uh, I'd love for you to come out there and work with us, maybe teach a class out there. And, we'd have to do the we'd have to do it. A little bit earlier for Instagramming because my friends cannot stay up that late. <laughs> we will. We'll do it in the morning. Yeah, we'll, do we'll a have few to do them. something like that. Okay, I, but I, I, we got to set it up because deal. It, what you're doing uh, is awesome. I appreciate um, that. And you know, to be able to reach to the people that you're reaching, um, I see it in some of the training that I've taken, but not to that level. Um, it's amazing and i and i want to learn not just the techniques that you're teaching mm -hmm. but how you're teaching it because that's that's really the biggest thing that i get out of and that of that you know all all that success is bob and jared you know building this curriculum uh together is how these stages how they learn how they progress and how you can get someone from knowing nothing and up in the tree in less than eight hours and looking like they've been climbing for two years up there so uh hats off to those guys but uh you know soon the things you have to teach we're developing a platform that's out there academy-train.com that you're going to be able to go on there and you can put all your training and education that you want to put out there to the world you can give it away for free you can charge for it but it's yours and it's on there awesome and uh you're gonna have the goal here is to capture 
everybody's education and training and tips and things they've learned under one platform that the industry has just a wealth of knowledge to be able to go to, be able to have that communication and friendship and social media on this platform to be able to go from, you know, a company to another company and take all your education with you to that new company and say, look what I have. I have, I have 400 hours of online yeah. courses over the last two years. I have 200 of hands-on education courses. I'm certified here. Here's my expiration date. I'm certified, certified, certif certification of completion. I took this master class. I worked with Mark on this. Here's all the things I have. I'd like to come work with you guys, you know, because I see what type of company you are and it's for the individual to go because when they go to company to company, they, 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 they keep it. all that yep. information, man. Yeah. So we're building this and I would love for you to come on there, build your own page, be able to put education film and trainings on there so other people can have, because you got a lot to teach guys. And, and for everybody listening today, you know, uh, follow Mark. How do you say your last name? Gadet. Gadet. You can follow me at I am Gadet. So it's I-A-M-G-A-U-D-E-T, Instagram. On Instagram. Follow him, guys. He's putting tips and tricks and things he's learning and everything. Uh, but we're going to have you back again, man, uh, yeah. in California. we got to make it work. We're going we're gonna to do I'm something. hoping to make it out to Reno, uh, to Arbor Fest West. Okay. You know, that's going to be a cool thing Let's happening do it. in come, September. Come, just come a couple days early or something. Yeah, and and we can maybe figure it out to, for me to just ride with you guys. Yeah, maybe you come out there. Are you there? flying? You're no, going, we'll drive. You'll drive? Yeah, we'll drive. That's it's close. like four hours. Oh, you know? yeah. So if you fly out to California, we'll yeah, all drive that, together. And, you know, I'm sure we'll we'll have to bring a couple trucks, Jared, all this stuff. Do yeah. Some, do we're some, gonna, they're out fishing right now. Right uh, now is the time, man. We'll I won't say some, I have the patience for fishing anymore. But as a kid, I really enjoyed fishing. We'll catch some bass out there. Clear Lake. Best lake in the entire country for you know, bass how, you know who's going to be the most jealous who my boss yeah. he'd be like i'll let you go bass fishing with jared <laughs> what Bro. we'll have fun you're on a podcast drinking beers training oh. and bass fishing oh man but guys follow them uh we appreciate everybody today uh listen to this and remember guys low and slow from mark for that so uh continue to elevate the standard of our industry through education, training, and innovation. But till next time, appreciate you guys. Love you. Bye.